Alright, so, hello. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Tyler, and I'm a freshman at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I'm going to be studying neuroscience, and I'm on a pre-med track. And today, I want to sit down and talk about 10 things that you should know before coming to Penn. I'm currently finishing up my freshman year at Penn, even though the whole COVID-19 situation kind of messed up my freshman year. But back at home, doing online courses, and um, yeah, make sure to subscribe if you're interested in Penn or college life in general. That's what my channel revolves around, and let's get right into it. Um, first of all, I want to talk about the prominent flex culture at Penn. Um, so at Penn, there's a real emphasis on like flex culture, and by that I mean like just spending money in a way that like flaunts it. So when I say that, I mean like for example, clothing is like a big deal at Penn, and like what you wear is kind of a big deal. First of all, it's it's good to understand that Penn and a lot of elite universities in general are just really wealthy places. 20% are in the top 1% of wealth in America, and around 4% are in the top 0.1%, which is very, very, very wealthy. Canada Goose, Canada Goose Jackets, Canada Goose Jackets and Canada Goose Jackets are a huge thing at Penn. And so for those of you that don't know, Canada Goose is a brand that makes really nice parkas that cost somewhere between 600 to 1200, like, that not all of them are super expensive, but the ones I'm talking about are the $1,200 ones. And when I tell you, like, when you go down Locust during the winter, I don't want to say all, but for the most part, you will see Canada Goose out and about. It's looking at meme at this point. A lot of people just say that Canada Goose is uh, an unofficial graduation requirement. And honestly, like, I can't afford one right now, but once I get a little bit of cash, like, I might have to splurge. But yeah, and just like designer, besides Canada Goose, like just designer clothes, designer shoes in general are just like a big thing. It's pin, and it's not like the normal, like, you know, a lot of people think Yeezys are nice and Yeezys definitely are nice, but I'm talking about when people spend like $1,100 on some Gucci loafers or like when people buy like the $600 um, Golden Goose pre beat up shoes. That's the type of like vibe that I'm talking about. And again, I'm not saying this is a negative, but I wish I would have just understood this more because coming from where I'm from, I'm from Mechanicsville, Virginia. It's like a small town in Virginia, right outside of Richmond. Our flex culture basically doesn't exist. There's no comparison, honestly. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm sitting here editing this and I just wanna make sure I say this because I, I didn't say it in the last video that this flex culture is a part of PIN, but it's not all of PIN. So certain circles are into the whole flex, um, flex culture thing, but it's not like a requirement if you come to PIN. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the abundance of research opportunities at PIN. So PIN is a research university, and what that means is that we're focused on research. I know a lot of schools have that label, and I guess what it means more is that a lot of our professors are doing their own independent research on the topic that they're teaching us. And first of all, that's a really good thing because you're learning from the best of the best, as in they are literally the people that are making the knowledge that are gonna be in our textbooks in the future. And as a result of like being a research university and having only 10,000 students, um, research jobs and like opportunities are just quite abundant, especially when you talk to your professors. Usually they're doing their own independent research and they would love to have someone in their class that's interested enough to want to work with them. And even as a freshman, there are opportunities for you to do research. Um, I personally decided against doing research my first year just because I was trying to get used to the academic landscape of Penn and I still am. This summer, I hope to be working on a project looking at how regrowing axons know where to go. And that was through Penn's um, Penn Undergraduate Research Mentorship Program or the PERM program. Sadly, the person that's like, the lab person there told me that their lab has been closed indefinitely and they're not sure if the PERM program is gonna happen this year because of COVID-19. So that kind of sucks, but we'll see how that plays out, I guess. But next, um, something you should understand about Penn is its location. Because before coming to Penn, I thought that Penn was more like NYU in 
the way that NYU doesn't really have a campus, it's more like its academic buildings are just buildings. I can assure anyone that's applying to Penn or coming to Penn that Penn does have a traditional campus area. Although it's in Philadelphia, it's kind of off from the big city center city part. Okay, I wanna explain a little bit better what I meant. So I'm on Penn's campus right now. This is like, um, this is College Hall right here. This is the big green building that everyone knows. And this is Van Pelt Library along with the Budden. There's Franklin Field right there. And there's the Palestra. So if you go to Market Street and just keep on going in less than a mile, you're at City Hall, which is the center of Center City. And before going to Penn and like visiting and all, I thought that Penn, when they said they were in Philadelphia, they meant like literally right in Philadelphia, similar to how NYU has their like classrooms in buildings that are like a part of New York City. But we actually do have our own kind of traditional campus where it's not exactly a closed campus, but there is campus space and yeah. Also um, in Philadelphia, they have the SEPTA transport system. Yeah, that's just something you should understand that it allows you to get anywhere in the city or even outside of the city to New Jersey. I've never lived in a place with, trans um, with public transportation like this. So being able to hop on the SEPTA and just like go anywhere to get something to eat or just to get off of campus for a second is always just a great thing. That's something I wish I understood more. Penn is not in center Philadelphia. It is in its own campus one mile away in, in a walkable distance from center Philadelphia or downtown Philadelphia. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I wish I knew more about before I got to Penn was the food situation. Um, so basically the food is just not that good. Um, it's not like horrible. It's not anything breathtaking. It's literally just okay. And at any college you'll get tired of the food, but definitely like I've gotten tired of the food. I feel faster because the food is quite mediocre. At Penn, you get a dining plan your freshman year. The dining plan consists of either swipes, which you can use at all the dining halls, or um, dining dollars, which you can use at the retail um, markets. As a freshman, you can pick between a balanced plan, one that goes um, leans towards dining dollars, one that leans towards swipes. And I think I got the balanced one and at the end of my first semester, I had like an extra $60 and an extra 40 swipes. I guess I just don't eat. But the dining halls are just like not that good. Houston Marketplace, which is under Houston Hall, they have like retail food and that food is pretty good. That's usually where I go for like lunch and stuff. Okay. And like again, I don't want to like come off as like roasting pen, but like to give a number to it, on my lowest day, I would give it a four and a half, and on my highest day, I would give it a six and a half. And that's my opinion. I, I said, said what I said. What I said. <laughs> okay, and the next thing you should definitely know before you get the pen is the quad. The quad is the kind of the historic dorms at Penn. It has three of the five freshman dorms at Penn, and it's kind of the center for like freshman life in general. Along with being the social dorm and the historic dorm, it's also known to be the dirty dorm. I live in the quad currently, well, not currently because COVID-19. Personally, um, I haven't had many encounters with roaches or rats. I've had zero encounters with rats the entire year, and I had one encounter with a roach. I was going to the shower, and I was sitting outside the shower waiting for it to warm up, and a roach like crawled across the floor. But the quad, um, you should know that the quad can get kind of crazy at certain times. There's like things that happen in the quad that like you won't see many other places. Like it's just big and it looks Ivy League-ish. It looks like really pretty. You should definitely know about the quad. Okay, and I really quickly would just want to like, I guess, show the quad real quick. This is the quad. Um, this run is huge, and a lot of students live here. And this is what I meant by like, it looks Ivy League-ish. It has like a lot of like Gothic architecture and like gargoyles and stuff. Can't really see in this low grade picture, but it's really cool. And my room is right there. And yeah, quad. All right, so the next thing that you should know before coming to Penn is that 
There will be a lot of important people on campus. So being a part of the Ivy League, there's like a little bit of clout that comes with it that allows us to like attract famous people, important people to come and speak to students. There's a really, really wide range of guests from political figures to actors to authors, analysts, um, CEOs. There's just like a huge range of people. Um, my, my first semester, I didn't really go to many other speaking events just because I was focused on other things. Um, but I did go to see John Legend. He had uh, an event where he encouraged undergraduate students to vote in my A Week in My Life Day 3 video. So if you want to see that, yeah, check it out. And I also saw Damon John like last month. He was at some like warden event and I mean, I'm not in the warden, but I wanted to see Damon John. So I just pulled up. And the next thing you should know before coming to Penn is what Penn face is. Penn face is a face that Penn students have where they sort of just hide all emotion and everything can be going wrong in their life and you will never know. And people want you to kind of think that they have everything in their life going for you. They, they have um, every single internship. They have all A's. They have a lot of friends. Um, and they're doing a lot on social media, on Instagram, they're posting when they go out to downtowns and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's just a thing, you'll experience it and you will overcome it with friends and just being honest with your friends. Yeah, and I don't wanna, I don't want you to think this is a thing only at Penn. What I'm saying is it's really excessive at Penn. Um, the whole like hiding any negatives in your life, it's just really like a big thing. And the next thing that you should know before coming to Penn is the social scene. Um, Penn is known as the social ivy often, and that's not a lie. But there are a lot of parties at Penn, um, obviously. I think Playboy ranked as like the number one party school at some point. Don't know about all of that, but the parties definitely are lit. They usually start around Thursday. And I think this is most because warden, the warden school, they don't have any classes on Friday. People do take, um, have to take classes in the college even if you're in warden, but that allows us to like kind of start our parties earlier than some other schools. Personally, I usually go out on the weekends and usually like Friday, Saturday thing. Usually like end around two o'clock. And then after those, there's late night parties at certain frats and those usually end around five. They usually start at two and end around five or just in the morning. Like I said, I usually only go out on the weekends because, you know, pre-med grind. Like, I really can't be out there like that. I kind of got to study sometimes, but yeah, there's a lot. And then outside of parties, Penn students socialize a lot through clubs. There are lots of clubs at Penn. Um, you'll find yours. And a lot of the clubs host BYOs, which are bring your owns. And it's basically when you go to a restaurant and kind of rent out the wing of the restaurant and everyone just brings their own alcohol and you just kind of have a good time. I'm not allowed to drink, so obviously I would never have a drink at any of these BYOs, but yeah, the BYOs are usually pretty lit. Um, currently I'm in the Black Student League as the admissions chair and I'm in Kaiden Key and Big Brother Big Sister. Um, but they don't have BYOs. But anyways, I'm in BSL and Kite and Key and both of those had BYOs in the last few weeks or the last few months and they're just fun times. So a lot of the clubs host formals and they're really fun. Formals are just when you dress up, everyone gets the nice gown, nice suit and go somewhere and basically have a party. Yeah, BSL, we had our formal. Um, Right before we left, put like a picture up somewhere, but we rented out a boat and had music on the boat, had a bar on the boat. Again, I can't drink, um, but <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, outside of parties and clubs, there's a bar scene with the main bar being Smokes. And yeah, a lot of people go there, have drinks, have fun. Um, I don't have a fake because I do not want to break a federal law. So I don't go to Smokes, but once I turn 21, I will be at Smokes with everybody else. And yeah, I'll be having a good time. And the next thing that you should know about Penn before you get here is definitely the pre-professional culture. This is sort of a pro and a con, but Penn definitely has a very pre-professional culture. 
this can definitely be, be seen in Penn's kind of competitive club culture. I wouldn't say that all the clubs are super competitive. The really like lucrative ones or like active ones where you're like in the community doing stuff are kind of um kind of competitive. For example, like consulting clubs at Warden where you're literally going to be consulting for small businesses in the Philadelphia area. Those are obviously going to be more competitive because you're actually doing something and if you aren't prepared to do it, then you're losing money for a nonprofit. So those type of clubs are definitely more competitive. Um, the more general clubs where like you enjoy something like Super Smash Brothers Club is not competitive, like you can just join. Some of the clubs are kind of competitive and take multiple rounds of interviews. So I'm involved in Big Brother Big Sister, Black Student League as a missions chair and Kaiden Key as just a like general like tour guide person. Um, Big Brother Big Sister had one interview. Black Student League had two interviews. Um, Kite and Key had two or three interviews. Some of them can be kind of intimidating, but like it kind of trains you to get ready for the professional life that we're all gonna live in, where I'm gonna be interviewing for, for medical school, so it's good for me to know how the interview process works, even if it's through a club. I'm getting multiple interviews and I'm practicing just pitching myself in general, so that's a good thing about it. I guess the bad thing about it is that, I mean, we're in college, so like, even though we're preparing for the professional world, I guess it's kind of like less enjoyable when you get cut from a club that you really want to be in. Okay. And the last thing you should know about Penn before you get here is there's a lot of cultural resources here. Penn has um, six cultural resource centers. Those include um, the Pan Asian American Community House for Asian Culture, the um, La Casa Latina for Latino Culture, um, Maku for Black Culture. There's also the Pan Women Center, the LGBT Center, and the Greenfield Intercultural House. So these are all physical buildings that give underrepresented students a place to like feel at home. Um, I can personally speak to Maku and GIC. So, along with Patch and La Costa Latina, Maku is housed in the Arch Basement, and it's basically a room. It has a TV with a Wii U and like a few offices in the back, and it's just kind of like a place to chill. There's couches, and they have like a bunch of like a whole deck of movies that embody like black culture of the African diaspora, and it's just a place to chill, really. Like. A lot of the black professors at Penn will come in and a lot of the upperclassmen will come in. So it's a good place to, as a black student, just kind of network and like get to know more people. Um, I definitely didn't go to Maku as much as I should have this year. I started going like towards the end of my first semester, but it's a really nice place to be at. And in general, it's also a nice place to study when people aren't in there, um, but yeah. I talked about this in my college decision video about how Black Pen kind of made me feel comfortable and I think this is like a big reason why is that a lot of people end up in Maku and it's literally a physical place that Black students can just get together. And this is something that a lot of the other schools I visited didn't have. They had like Black Student League, um, African Student Association, etc, etc, but they didn't have a physical space that were, that's for people to meet and congregate, so yeah. And then the Greenfield Intercultural House is for students that feel like they embody multiple cultures. I've experienced the GIC because of the Pin First program is housed there. Pin First is a program for first generation students. Um, I'm first generation according to Penn. I guess in general I'm not really first generation because my dad went to college and he got his MBA. Penn's definition of first generation is if one of your parents did not go to college, but I usually go to the GIC because um, there's the first generation low income study groups that they have and I do that for math. It's really cool. Um, it's every Tuesday. They have food and they have a tutor come in and we kind of just group study and whenever we have a question or something that we can't do ourselves, the tutor comes over and explains to us and it's really cool and you save a swipe with it. So I would definitely look in the family study groups when you get here if you're a first generation low income student. All right, so that was 10 things that you should know before you come to Penn, 10 things I wish I knew before I got to Penn. But either way, um, just so you all know, I really like Penn, I'm enjoying it. 
and I'm almost done with my first year after I get done with this last few weeks of online classes thanks to you know Miss Rona. But if you're a part of the class of 2024 or you just want to know more about Pitt in general don't be afraid to DM me. I'll try to get to them as fast as possible as I'm still in school and it's very busy. It's actually more busy than it is during the normal year it seems like but I'll try to get to all the questions that I can and yeah. Have a good day.